So in this video, we're going to be talking about the MOS or MOS capacitor. And so what about the MOSFET? What is this, uh, this MOS capacitor? Well, it's part of the MOSFET. It's the most important part. Uh, if you understand how the MOS capacitor works, you understand the majority of how a MOSFET works. So let's just draw out real quick the MOSFET, uh, just a 3D sketch of what the MOSFET looks like. So we know we've got, you, you've likely seen this before, um, but in case you haven't, I'm going to be explicit. So we've got this material here, which is called the gate. Uh, it's typically made out of uh, some sort of metal or a polysilicon. We've got an insulating oxide here, which is, uh, its purpose is just to isolate the gate from the rest of the device. And then down here, we've got the substrate or the body of the semiconductor. And this is just a big chunk of, uh, in this case, let's say it's P-type uh, semiconductor material. So it's just P-type silicon. Well, okay. Uh, so typically when we work with the MOS capacitor or the MOSFET in general, uh, we apply a voltage to the gate and for now, we're going to assume that the body of the MOSFET is grounded. So the substrate, uh, this is called the substrate or the body. You'll hear both terms interchangeably. And uh, this, this MOSFET diagram is ubiquitous in textbooks, in lectures. You'll, you'll see it probably many, many times. And so we want to know uh, what happens when we apply a voltage well so we know that we're gonna have a bunch of holes floating around in here because this is a p-type material and some of them are gonna be near the gate some of them are gonna be far away but when we apply a voltage VG so let's say VG equals 1 volt or let's, let's make it smaller, let's say it's like 0.5 volts. So when we apply some VG, um, that's going to create this electric field between the oxide and the, semicon and the semiconductor because we're applying a voltage and a voltage set up over a distance creates an electric field. And this electric field, since it's pointing in this direction, the holes are gonna be repelled from the gate. And so what we end up with is we form, we artificially form a depletion region. So we know that there were, since this is a p-type material, in addition to the holes that we added, there's a bunch of negatively charged ions, which I didn't draw in the rest of the semiconductor, but they're implicitly there. And so now these are exposed, and we don't have any holes within this region. So we formed a depletion region, uh, and this is, as you might expect, uh, called depletion mode. So we say that this MOS capacitor or this MOSFET is operating in depletion mode because we're just getting rid of the holes. And so what happens exactly? Uh, how, do we, how do we analyze this quantitatively? Well, we can do that with the band diagram. So if we say that this is our oxide, uh, this is the gate, and we're just gonna ignore the effects of the oxide on the band diagram for now. Uh, and so we apply a voltage here. We apply a voltage VG to the gate. And so initially, our semiconductor band diagram, since it's a P-type material, we expect it to look like this. It's got our conduction band, our intrinsic energy, and our valence band. And the Fermi energy is somewhere down here, EF because it's a p-type material. Now we don't know exactly where because I haven't given you the doping concentration, but we definitely know it's below the intrinsic Fermi energy. And so what about when we apply a voltage VG? So VG equals 0.5 volts. And we're again implicitly assuming that this body is grounded uh, or that VG is applied relative to the body. Well, uh, far away from the substrate, we'd, we wouldn't expect much to change. So uh, far away, 
uh, no change because we've removed these holes from very close to the gate but there weren't that many holes close to the gate compared to the entire body or, or the entire substrate the entire substrate is huge so we don't expect the band diagram to change much um, near the near the edge where it's where it's grounded but at the very edge of the oxide we expect it to change a great deal because there's uh, near the oxide uh, there's no free carriers there's no holes and so we expect the band diagram near the oxide to look like an intrinsic semiconductor uh, because an intrinsic semiconductor isn't doped with uh, any any dopants so it doesn't have any holes I mean it, it does have uh, thermal thermally generated holes but it doesn't have an appreciable amount of holes to conduct electricity with. So near the oxide, we'd expect the intrinsic Fermi of EI to be very close to EF because there's no, that's what's, that, that is how we get uh, no holes or only thermally generated holes. So the band diagram for an intrinsic semiconductor just looks like this. It's very simple. Um, we've got our valence band down here, our conduction band up here, and this band in the middle is both EI and EF. Uh, so if I were to draw EI as well, it would look like that. And so we expect it to look like this very close to the very close to the edge. So we expect EI to be here. And the only way we can get from EI being up here to down here near the Fermi level is if the band bends downward. So just like in the PN junction, our bands are bending. And we can analyze this also in terms of the depletion region. So we can say that since there's an electric field produced, you can integrate that and then you get the, the voltage. Um, <clears throat> But either way, you get the same result. So there's this depletion region formed. And in the band diagram, we see that as a bending of the band. A bending of the band. And so this is what the band diagram looks like for a MOSFET operating in depletion mode. or just with a depletion region formed. So with this depletion region formed. But what happens then when we apply a larger voltage? So what happens say when VG isn't just 0.5? Uh, what happens when it's like one volt or two volts or even higher than that? Well, we'd expect this conduction bit, we'd expect all these bands to continue bending, right? Because that was sort of the trend when we applied an increasing voltage. So we'd expect them to bend even more than they did before. And if we're being, uh, if we're being really precise, um, we'd also expect the depletion region to grow, right? So uh, we know that the depletion region width is dependent on the square root of the reverse bias voltage that we apply to it. So we'd expect this depletion region to grow. So I'm just going to erase the old depletion region. So we'd expect the depletion region to grow, to get larger. And so this is seen by the bands starting to bend earlier. And we'd expect them to bend more because we're applying more of a voltage. And how much exactly are they bending? Uh, well, in this case, where the oxide isn't doing anything, they're just bending by the same by the voltage that we apply so whatever this gate voltage was in this case it was one one volt so the scale here is a bit off um, but the idea is that the amount that it's bending by is just the voltage that we're applying and that's when we're ignoring the effects of the oxide things get a little more complicated when we do that um, but let's look at this by band diagram now um, it looks there's something really interesting happening at this at this surface at the surface near the oxide and that's that the intrinsic energy EI uh, is below the Fermi energy and we know that if we have an n-type semiconductor this is exactly what happens our Fermi energy is up here 
So we'd expect that if the band bends so that the Fermi energy is above the intrinsic energy, or equivalently EI is below EF, then we would expect this to look like n-type material at the very edge. So what we get is not only do we form this depletion region, but we also start to attract electrons, free electrons. And I draw free electrons as just a minus sign without a circle around them. Uh, and so we'd expect these holes to be repelled and to go into the, the bulk. And we'd also expect to attract these electrons. So that's really interesting. Uh, and this is, this is what's known as inversion. Because we're inverting the semiconductor type. So this is now, it looks like an n-type material. It's got these negatively charged ions, uh, which isn't, that's not normal for uh, an n-type material. But it's got a bunch of free electrons. And that's the important part here, is that this can conduct electricity using electrons. So this p-type material we've effectively turned into an n-type material. And so this is no longer depletion mode, we've entered inversion mode. Inversion mode. And this is how MOSFETs operate. This is uh, initially when you apply a small voltage, you start to form this depletion region. And then as you form a larger and larger voltage, the depletion region grows and grows and grows. And eventually, when you get to the point where your band diagram bends enough so that it bends past the Fermi level, um, it starts to look like an n-type semiconductor at the interface. And so we've started to attract uh, negative electrons. And you can also look at this uh, in terms of if we're applying a positive voltage at the gate, we'd expect positive charges to accumulate at this gate. So lots of positive charges and those positive charges initially just repel the holes but eventually they start attracting electrons from the bulk or from the substrate uh sorry yeah this also called as if things weren't complicated enough uh this substrate is also known as the bulk because it's the large portion of the semiconductor so bulk substrate body the terms are all used essentially interchangeably and so this is what happens. Uh, this is how a MOSFET operates. So this is, this is known altogether as the field effect. And so today we've covered the MOSFET under depletion mode. We've covered it under inversion mode. And in the next video, we're going to talk about the full band diagram of the MOSFET and sort of how it operates um, with how, how the full MOSFETs, MOSFET structure operates, not just with the um, MOSFET capacitor, but with the additional, uh, with the additional components as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.